God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And fear not them which are able to kill the body, but are able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Whatever you have been taught, whatever you have learned, whatever doctrine that you attend to, the Bible says that there is a God, there is a hell, and if you continue to reject Jesus Christ, who is God, you will burn in hell. We are here to tell you not to go to hell, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, to be saved. You're living a life right now. You've been born of a woman. You qualify by being born of a woman to have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You were born to praise God and you were born to die. The wages of sin is death. Since you're going to die, that makes you a sinner. And since you are a sinner, God sent His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come and to die upon Calvary's cross, all according to the scriptures laid out by God. He was buried in a tomb, and He rose again the third day according to the scriptures, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. We have a condition that came to us from Grandma and Grandpa Adam. God told them, do not eat of the fruit, and mankind ate of the fruit. God tells you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, and you walk away disobeying God. As always, that is our nature. God says, do it, we say no. And then there are serious, serious problems. Serious consequences when we don't listen to our parents. I thank God for a mother that put a paddle to my behind. I am not like the brats today. My mother taught me to respect your elders and respect your parents. Well, God is the Father of all of us. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. I don't care what your school, your science, your education taught you. God made you. You can't have a big bang from something to be here. You have to have something to be here. You have to have something, and something don't come from nothing. So here is God creating you and everything that you have. Now back to Grandma and Grandpa Eve. They disobeyed God. And they had a serious consequences put on their life by the warning of God. You will now die because you disobeyed my commandment. Today, you will die because you are a sinner. You have a terminal condition called sin. Your death may come by cancer, being hit by a car, natural causes, 
Mookie. Your famous last words, hey, watch this, but you will die, and you will die because you are a sinner. And yes, that includes stealing, lying, adultery, everything like that. But stealing, lying, adultery, and fornicating, all that won't put you into hell. Rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior will put you into hell. As we go back to John chapter 3. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The wrath of God is hell. Because you have rejected what God has done for you uh, with the gospel that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. And was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. <coughs> your terminal disease prescription can't be fulfilled by a pharmacist. It must be fulfilled by the Son of God. And on that prescription paper that you hold, that I hold in my hand right here, it says, Come to Calvary and believe on my Son to be saved. Now, Salvation in Jesus Christ, you may still die outside the rapture. Salvation, eternal life, perishing, is in an eternal state that you will be when you die. The Bible speaks of an afterlife. And there's no purgatory, there's no virgins, there's no... Whatever you want to believe, there's not that. What you don't want to believe, that there's a holy place called heaven where God abounds, where God is holy, where he says, be ye holy, for I am holy. In order to get to that place, you cannot be a sinner. On the other hand, the other place that you can go to upon your death that Jesus tells us about is a place called hell, Matthew chapter 10. All is not well, there is a hell. And because you choose to reject it, because you choose not to believe it, because you choose to take medication for it, you choose to drink on the pros of it, that does not make it not so and not real. You can't do away with hell because of what you are and who you think you are. It's who God is. And if you don't believe in God, the Bible says you're a fool. And the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God, atheist. I don't believe. Prepare to meet him anyway. God, your creator, the father of all, And yet, he saw your rebellious condition, how you turn and reject and don't do what he said, is long suffering. And he saves people like me as he can save you now. And he has called us who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, go in all the world and bring the gospel. And not all do that. Salvation.
Thanks, it would be wonderful if I were to believe on Jesus and go right to heaven. But we are left behind here so that we can be a witness to what God has done for us in our lives. We are here to promote and to raise and to birth and to guide and to nurture new Christians and old Christians alike. And for a crowd like this in Daytona Beach on a Saturday morning, I can only assume by the Bible that most of you don't believe in God. Most of you will not do what God told you to do. And most of you will reject God. And some of you will say, well, I believe in God. I'm a Christian. Then why aren't you doing what God has told you to do in the Word? I am a Christian. Have you believed in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved? Well, no, I do. That You have not done what the Bible has told you to do. You're not a Christian. And you come over to me and say, I'm a good person. I, do. I will tell you to the face by the Holy Bible, King James, that you are not a Christian according to the Bible because a Christian is one that believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. I will take you to Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 to show you that your works can't save you. I will take you to Romans chapter 3 to show that there is none good. No, not one. That my salvation today rests not in what I have done. My salvation is not what I can do. My salvation is not what I will do. My salvation is on the righteousness of God, Jesus Christ, upon what He has done. He suffered. He bled. He died for you, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Now, that don't stop you to be a sinner. 1 John 1, 9, we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Now that don't give us a license to sin. That just gives us, you know, we're not perfect. True repentance is that you're sorry. Remorse. Not happy. Not prideful about your sins, but you have sinned against God. And God said, believe on the Lord Jesus. You've got to bring your sins to God. Not a priest. Not to money. Not to attendance. You've got to bring your sins to God by the holy blood of Jesus Christ. Acts 20:28, 20, which is God's blood. God requires blood for payment for sins, and human blood cannot do it because human blood is sin. I can assume, I'm not a medical doctor, I can assume 95% of your diseases are in your blood. Your blood, your works, your humanness cannot save yourself, and it cannot save nobody else. That's why Jesus Christ came as a sinless lamb, as the precious blood of a lamb without spot, to offer that blood to God once and forever. And it's not a blood that you drink. This prescription is not taken orally, it's taken by faith. Only a cannibal would eat a human being and rely on whatever you want to believe. Cannibals eat humans. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ makes you a Christian. Believing in your works, believing in the good person that you are, believing in hope, believing in love, 
will just make you a finer person in hell than someone else. And if you read your Bible, there are different degrees in hell. A whole bunch of uh, sect will be 30 degrees in hell, while others will have other degrees in hell. And yes, I said your secret society cannot save you. Being in the line of Solomon in the temple cannot save you. And this date and period of time right now, being of Abraham's seed, cannot save you. Believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, that will save you. That will save you that when you take your last breath, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. You won't be buried and wake up in hell. Put in your sins and your faith and all that you're all upon Jesus. That don't take money. That just takes a little time. It takes a little breaking of that pride. It takes repenting and confessing and being sorry to the Holy God of all and bringing His Son as the payment. And religion can't do that. <coughs> See, let's assume for a moment that Jesus Christ proclaimed who He was. Let's just assume that the Bible's correct for a moment. I'll meet you on your way, you meet me on my way. There have been times where I thought, hey, maybe this is real, maybe this is unreal. Maybe this is not. But let's think, let's think if the Bible's real for a moment. And Jesus Christ spoke, I am the way. Well, then there can be no other way. Don't come to me, well, I do. No, you can't do. Jesus said, I'm the way. Well, I'm a Christian. Well, how are you a Christian? Blah, blah, blah. No, the blood of Jesus makes you a Christian. Faith and belief in Jesus Christ makes you a Christian. Amen. So don't come walking up and saying that you got your own way when Jesus says, I am the way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth. You know, God can never, and is not able, and cannot ever tell a lie. The holy God is without lying. And we can't even fathom that today, because business involves lying. In God, the holy God, there is no capability at all for a lie. God can't even think of a lie. God is not able to lie. You know your priest lies? You know your pastor lies? When he gets up to that pulpit and tells you that nice little cute story, that's probably a preacher's story. It didn't happen to him. I've heard those stories millions of times. A lot of them are illustrations. There are no white lies, there are no black lies, there are no polka dot lies. Lie is a lie and God is unable to lie. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. So to be going to heaven, Jesus is the way. And that's the truth. Now remember, we are assuming if the Bible's correct here. And if the Bible's correct, you are wrong and God is right. And the problem is, when you are wrong, 
you will literally suffer for your wrong for all eternity. And we're coming to you that you may not suffer, may you may not have torment, that you may have peace, joy, and long suffering with God for all ever. What's the long suffering in heaven? You get to get a perfect new body. You get no health problems. You got a program that the government can never offer you. Eternal life in God the Father, in complete holiness, never ever to be able to sin again. That's the suffering in heaven. The suffering in heaven is that you'll never have to check your thoughts. Everything in heaven will be correct. Everything in heaven will be righteous. That's suffering. God's way. God's suffering is you'll never get tired. You'll never get old. There are doctors in heaven, but you don't need them. There are pharmacists in heaven, but you won't need their services anymore. That's the suffering of heaven. And that suffering comes by the suffering that God has done for you upon the cross. And let me tell you about the suffering that God has done for you, that you may suffer wonderfully in heaven. He was whipped. That the Bible says his back was described as ground broken by a farmer for a crop. A cat of nine tails whipped upon his back by soldiers, by Roman soldiers. And they were not merciful, friends. They were fierce, they were mighty, and they enjoyed and fulfilled their job in beating people, unlike Americans. Americans will send you to jail where it's air conditioning and food, but a Roman soldier given a prisoner and told to whip them would do their job to the fullest. And when they whipped Jesus Christ, the Bible says that they whipped him to the extreme that no man could ever suffer that pain like Jesus suffered. That's one suffering of Jesus. And yet when I get to heaven, I'll suffer no more pain. They ashamed Jesus. They mocked Him. They scorned Him. And if you scorn and mock or tell an a, 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 a unracist joke play in America, you offended me. Don't make fun of them kind of people. You offend me. And Jesus was offended to the brutish part. And did not open his mouth. Did not get the ACLU. Did not call no lawyers. He stood there and took it that you may have eternal life. Preaching the truth. That's good. All right, you Americans are sissy pennyways. And you'll stand before the holy God guilty without Jesus Christ. They pulled the hair out of his beard. You walk up to me and you try to pull my hair, I, I, I'm going to fight. I don't have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. How, how can I say, I would not do what Jesus did. I think that's right. And yet Jesus had the very hairs of his beard pulled that you are a sinner. And when I get to heaven by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'll have no more pain. I'll tell you what else, Jesus. He stood before a Roman court, innocent, without guilt. Judgment by the judge four times that this man is innocent. And that you, America,
is run to the Constitution. You know where Jesus ran when he was mistried twice? Once by a kangaroo court and once by the Roman government? You know where he ran to? He limped and he made his way to the hill of Calvary. He didn't go to no lawyer. He went to Father God. He went in the garden and prayed. That's where Jesus went. Because of you. Because of me. That I may suffer righteousness in heaven. I'll tell you something else Jesus suffered. That you may not suffer hell by believing on Him. You ever whack your thumb with a hammer? That's that moment in time you whack your thumb. Hallelujah, praise! No, it's not. That's a cry out of pain. Especially if you do it the second time. But with Jesus, they didn't whack his thumb with a hammer. They whacked his hands and his feet with the nail. They drove spikes into the hands and feet of Jesus Christ because you are a sinner. I'm telling you, Jesus was innocent and you are guilty and they crucified him instead of you, Barabbas. You, Barabbas, went home and Jesus suffered. You get saved you'll find out what I'm talking about. The sinner went home while Jesus suffered and bled and died. And where do I go when I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? I go somewhere where I get a new body. All my bones will be healthy. My foot will be healed. No headaches, no pain, no aspirin, no heart attack, no diseases. And yet my Bible tells me in four places that the Lord Jesus Christ today bears the scars of those nails in His hands and His feet because we are the sinners, we are the guilty ones. He suffers the marks for all eternity. Listen to me, human. How would you like the moments before God tells you to go to hell? You see those hands, the, the prints of the nails that He did for you, profess to you your condemnation. And the Bible describes hell as going into the lake of fire that you will be tormented in torment as you're tormenting. See, you can let Jesus been tormented for you by the gospel. That he died for your sins. That he was buried. And he arose again. You can have that torment. The torment of Isaiah 53. Jesus Christ suffering. The Lamb of God. Which take away the sins of the world. That took all the beatings that I should get. And you. You can take that torment and go to heaven. That's what I suggest to you. Or you can say, I can pay for my own sin. I've got Allah. i got Mary. i got Juju Bees. i got the Spaghetti Monster. i got the Pokemon. You can't find Pokemon in hell. And if you 
Christians continue to reject Jesus Christ, you will pay for your own sins in hell, where your sins were paid for at Calvary. See, Jesus can pay for your sins, and you get to suffer righteousness, or you can reject Jesus Christ, and you can suffer for your own sins, your own way. See, sin has to be paid for. You can't go into Walmart, fill that card up, and just walk out. Somebody's going to pay for that. Either your job is going to pay for that by you working, or the government's going to pay for it because you don't want to do nothing, but somebody has to pay for those groceries. And I don't have a list of sins. But every one of us here are sinners and we've got our sins. Now, is your sin so great that you're willing to be tormented forever and not believe in Jesus Christ? Is that fear really that great that you'll burn in hell forever? But that fear won't put you in hell. Not bringing that beer to Jesus Christ as a sinner and rejecting what Jesus Christ will put you in hell. See, that drink makes you a sinner. What are you going to do with your sins? Are you going to pay for your own sins? Or are you going to have Jesus Christ pay for them sins? And... Bringing your sins to Jesus, you got to have remorse. you got to repent. you got to be sorry. you got to be able to want to quit it, even if you can. And that's not being preached in the churches today. There are people who are saved or battling this sin, and they're battling it. They're not giving in. They're battling and they're pleading with God, and they're reaching out to God, and they're putting them in the blood, and they're trying, they're stopping, they're going, they're stopping, and they're, but they're sorry, they're repentant, and it's under the blood. <clears throat> Salvation, eternal life is right now, you're going to die. Right now. You can change the course of your eternal life by what you do with Jesus Christ right now. The Bible says in John chapter 3, if you have not ever believed on Jesus Christ, you are in condemnation right now. It's not you're going to hell, you're in hell. It's like a Christian is with the Lord right now. You've got to change your destination. You've got to change plans. You've got to go to the heavenly route. And that heavenly route is by Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and now we come to the life. Life is not in religion. Life is not in membership. Life is not in cash, check, money order, or online payments. Life is not PayPal. Life is not in who you are. I dare you to come out, I'll show you who you are in the Bible. The one that said, I am the way. The truth and the life. Continuing what he said, no man cometh unto the Father, capital F, but by me. The me that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6 and 7 says, there's nothing that can get you to God but Jesus. That's it.
There are people here that are driving. They got cars. You're supposed to have a driver's license. That's the law. But there are people out there who are driving who do not have a license. Or not capable of having a license. And yet, in heaven, you'll find people there who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. You will never find anybody who does not have Jesus Christ as their Savior. God will not allow you in heaven without a license. And that license is Calvary. That license of Calvary does not give you a license to sin. That license at Calvary gives you a yield sign to sin. And maybe even hopefully a stop sign to sin. You gotta realize as you're doing your commerce here in Daytona Beach, Florida, walking around, enjoying the sun and enjoying breathing, and you got something going on this afternoon, that's great, that's wonderful. You got a great job, you got a good bank account, whatever. You're, you're living. But you gotta realize you may not be living tomorrow. Where will you be? The Bible says you'll be either in heaven by Jesus Christ or you'll be hell by rejecting what He has done. There's nowhere else. You are a body, soul, or spirit. Your body will be buried. Your soul will be going back to God. Your, your, your soul. Your body will go in the grave. Your spirit goes back to God. But your soul is eternal. And your soul can suffer or your soul can be in glory with the Lord Jesus Christ upon death. The Gospel is that Christ died for your sins according to the Scriptures. And He was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. There's no cash, no money. Keep it. Don't take out your wallet. There's no eating of Jesus. There's no Allah. There's no Morari. There's no hall, kingdom halls. It's Jesus Christ, the righteous. The one that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The one that said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the water of life. I am. That's the words of Jesus. He is I am because you are not. And that's not American thinking. Your eternal life today rests upon the finished work of Jesus Christ. Whether you believe it or whether you reject it. When you die, your eternal existence rests. That's a poor word to use. Rests upon what you did with Jesus Christ while you are alive. And if someone who has died has not believed on Jesus Christ as their Savior, they are not resting in peace. That is a lie on a tombstone, in stone. There is no peace unto the wicked, saith the Lord. Ezekiel. Either holy with Jesus, or you're a wicked rejecting Jesus Christ. Death happens every day. It just may happen to you today. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be.
be saved.